Hello everyone and welcome back to a best of three series of Professional StarCraft 2. Today it's time for a Zerg vs Protoss that was recently played during DreamHack Valencia. Now in case you're unfamiliar, DreamHack Valencia, it's an offline tournament, one of the premier events that we have in StarCraft 2. And offline of course means that the players are actually all there at the actual venue. Anyways, this is an important match with a lot of money on the line and spawning right here in game number one in the top left hand corner. Playing with the blue Zerg drones from South Korea, we have one of the very best Zerg players in the world, and his name is Solar. His opponent, <laughs> playing here with the red Protal pieces from Italy, likewise also one of the very best Zergs. We are looking at Raynor's main Nexus. So Raynor, absolute madman that he is, decided to bring out his Protoss in a premier tournament in a very important match. So if you've been watching the channel for the better part of this year, I've casted quite a few of Raynor's off-race games. He's been playing a lot of Protoss, he's been playing a little bit of Terran as well, and he's looking very strong. But is he good enough to take on someone of the caliber of Solar? So just to clarify, this is played during the group stage of the tournament. So the third group stage, they had four-man groups. Their particular group was Solar, then Raynor, DNS, and Nice. So I think nine times out of ten, you know, these two would be moving on out of the group regardless. But this is a battle for first place, right? Not to show any disrespect, by the way, to DNS and, and, and Nice, but I do feel that Solar and Raynor are definitely a little bit higher ranked. Either way, uh, first place in this group did matter, because basically, the better you did throughout the group stage, the, like, the better your seating would be for the rest of the tournament, too. So this is an actual important match. So in the first series, um, Mr. Raynor went up against DNS with his Zerg, just to clarify. With his Zerg, he won 2-0. Solar went up against Nice, also, of course, with his Zerg, and he won also 2-0. Meaning that this is the decider match on who gets first place in the group. I'm excited for this one. I haven't seen these games yet, but I want to see how Raynor did against someone of the caliber of Solar. Because Solar really is a very good Zerg. Like, Solar, I mean, he's always a little bit tricky to describe, right? So he's not really someone who regularly wins Premier Tournaments. And again, I don't mean that with any disrespect. I think whenever we discuss who the best Zerg player from South Korea is, nine times out of ten, you'll hear people saying, well, either Dark or Rogue. Solar, though, is really, like... He's up there, right? Like, he's one of those guys who will usually make it to, like, a round of eight, maybe a semifinals, maybe a round of 16 or so. He will always do very well, but he will rarely win an actual Premier Tournament, which kind of sucks, because he really is very strong. But he is, uh... Yeah, he's a very formidable opponent. So, Raynor has mentioned several times that his goal with Protoss is to reach 7k MMR. What impresses me about his playstyle, too, is that he doesn't really... Like, 7k MMR, by the way, is, like, you know, top 10 world. So, I don't know if that's ever feasible, but... Anyway... Um, what impresses me about the way that he plays Protoss is that he doesn't really play cheese. So he usually just plays straight up macro, the way in which a lot of Zerg players, um, you know, would normally face off against top level Protosses. So it's not really, yeah, it's not really a cheesy style. He just plays solid, straightforward macro. And so far, he seems to be doing very well. Now, because this never happens in Premier Tournaments, I actually had to dive into the rulebook of DreamHack to figure out the exact details. And from what I understand, this is what the, the rules actually say, okay? From what I understand, Raynor, in this best of three series, can pick Protoss in game number one. If, say, he loses, he can actually switch to Zerg in game number two. So, if I understand correctly, he can choose whatever he likes for the entire series, and he can pick whatever race he likes for the entirety of the series as well. Which is kind of cool, right? Because I know a lot of players are not necessarily, even if they're very good at the matchup, they're not necessarily the biggest fan of the mirror matchups. So Terran versus Terran, Protoss versus Protoss, and Zerg versus Zerg, they're all very dicey, very difficult to play, very explosive. Even though I do think that Raynor is probably a better ZvZ player than, than Solar, um, he can still make this a Zerg versus Zerg if he, well, ends up switching in game number two, for example. That's kind of cool, right? Not something that we really have seen before in a game of StarCraft 2, especially not at premier events, but... Yeah, it seems like the rules do definitely give you that, that freedom, which is kind of nice. It's funny, though, how it's taken 12 years of StarCraft 2 for that to come up. Anyway, so far, this Oracle absolutely denied stellar defense right here from Solar, showing us what happens when you're going up against a top-tier Zerg. He did not lose anything, right? Nope. Well, I mean, maybe a couple of Zerklings. Yeah, an Overlord, apparently. 
That was the scouting overlord that saw the timing right there of the third nexus, which did indeed go down pretty early on into this game. So we are on the map Stargazers. Stargazers features that pocket base. A couple of mineral fields over here that can be mined out with eight trips of a worker each. So, you know, it's not like you can mine this out super quickly, but this is a relatively easy to acquire base in the earlier stages of the match. Generally speaking, Stargazers, in the games that I've seen so far, it forces a lot of macro games. Just because it's pretty easy to really take like five bases on this map, you'll generally speaking see, yeah, macro games on a map like this. So apparently Raynor is setting himself up for exactly that as well. Solar, in the meantime, already taken up the fourth hatchery at 5 minutes and 20-something seconds. That is very early for Zerg. He is recognizing the situation that he's in. He's been probably playing a lot against Hero recently on the Korean ladder, right? Or maybe in some custom games as well. Um, Solar is definitely familiar with that style, but is he also familiar with a Mass Phoenix approach? We don't normally see Mass Phoenix approaches anymore in StarCraft 2, at least not over the last few months. Initially, when the first, you know, few games were being played in the new multiplayer balance patch, we saw these openers quite a bit. But how exactly does Solar respond? So, so far, he's responding extremely well. Yeah, barely losing anything. I mean, a couple overlords here and there, but... Not the end of the world whatsoever. Okay, Solar has decided to attempt a bailing bust? Are you kidding me? Well, I guess we'll see exactly how fast the clicking from Raynor is. Raynor, generally speaking, very good at multitasking. He might be preoccupied right here with the Phoenixes, but there is a sentry over here at the front available. He sees it right now. Force field, perfect. That's what you want to see. This is why we normally don't see bailing busts. That force field was flawless. Phoenix is coming back home right now. This is Solar disrespecting Raynor in a way. Yep. This is probably Solar thinking, okay, that Italian kid, what is he thinking? Picking up, you know, protos against me? Does he not know who I am? But that was flawless. Interestingly enough, by the way, when Phoenixes lift up Banelings like that, they do not do air damage. They actually do, like, splash damage to ground units, which is very strange. A little bit of a, a weird, you know, interaction in StarCraft 2 that we don't see very frequently, but figured it was worth noting. Banelings do not accidentally become, like, air scourge or something along those lines. That would be... Kind of cool, I guess, but... Anyhow, yep, Solar tried getting a cheap win, didn't happen. Now he's stuck with a lot of Zerklings, and it definitely puts him at a bit of a deficit. Ah, not the end of the world, though. We already saw the timing right there off that hatchery in the bottom left -hand corner. He's got a good amount of drones. In the meantime, though, eight additional gateways are coming up. So that's going to be ten gateways, plus one arrow weapons is researching two, but I almost feel like that's a fake. If you got to go for ten gateways, do you really plan on playing a longer game? Yeah, maybe. So, I thought for a second maybe the plus one air weapons upgrade is mostly just a, a story that Raynor is trying to sell here to Solar. Because Solar definitely has seen the spinning inside of that cybernetic score, so he knows that there's likely going to be air research as a follow-up. High Templar, at this point, they're spotted too, but... Yeah, despite the gateway explosion, we do also see the research here towards Seonic Storm and a fourth Nexus and all that, so... I think Raynor is just going to continue playing macro here. But he definitely has the potential to go for an attack. That makes me a little bit concerned, but I guess it's fine. Probably? Maybe? Alright. So what exactly is the goal for the Zerg? Well, apparently what Solar does for now, after that relatively bad attack in the earlier stages of this game, he might try and like get a cancel right here on the fourth Nexus, but I think he's probably forced to play a more macro-focused style. Yeah, let's go in Queens right here, Roaches, Zerklings. This is basically a I don't want to die to anything type of opener here from uh, from Solar at this point. Which is very good, but it does mean that the game is likely going to go the distance. Phoenixes are getting some work in right now, though. Well, initially, they didn't really do that much. Yeah, they've killed a good amount of Overlords now. Look at that. <laughs> this is a near flawless game so far for Raynor. He's barely lost anything. Oh, here we go again. Okay, now he's going to lose a little bit more because there's not much you can do against Banelings, but that still was not a cost-efficient trait right there for the Zerk player whatsoever. All right, Hive is coming up. Wouldn't be surprised if Solar is just going to go for that, you know, spellcaster-based army. The Korean Zerks tend to favor that sort of style, other than maybe uh, Sue, but... Yeah, this is the nice thing about Phoenixes, though. You don't really want to have them necessarily as part of your maxed-out army, but they will pretty much always deal some sort of damage. Unlike oracles that really get shut down hard, phoenixes can still fly in later and get like, you know, half a dozen drones, just like that. Couple overlords here and there. 
it adds up quite a bit. And they're really a unit that allow you beautiful force fields again. They're really a unit that allows you to leverage your way to success, right? You can you can slowly build up that economy. And when you have phoenixes out, I mean, as long as you're playing reasonably well, it should be quite difficult for the opponent to kill you. Like, imagine, like, a, a Ravager push or something like that. It's just not going to happen, right? Queen drop's not really a great option either. I guess maybe, like, a Nidus Worm could be an issue. But this is all really bad for Solar, my god! An absolute Zirkling bloodbath. More drones are going down in the meantime on the other side of the map. You know what? If you would have hidden the, the name tags in this game so far, I would have guessed maybe a classic playing with Protoss over here. This looks like maybe even a Showtime, right? Like this looks like one of the classical approaches of playing, uh, playing Protoss. And this is an extremely well-executed style so far. Additional gateways are coming up. Okay, this is like a... Almost like a bouquet of gateways over here. <laughs> Give your girl uh, a bouquet of gateways, okay? She'll love it. Or your man. That's okay. Man can get flowers too. But this is... Anyways. This is an awful lot of gateways. Yeah, we are already at 10. There's gonna be 17 gates here in total. Double upgrades coming up as well. Primarily upgrading shields once more. So I think Raynor is gonna try and lay down the law here in a little bit. He showed that his... Cybercore was researching. Maybe that's just for the Phoenixes that are already out, but normally that's a big indicator that Zerk wants to go for like a, a Skytos, you know, counter, right? But that's not happening in this game here. Raynor, I think, is making a transition towards Mass Gateway Unit instead. All right, Banelink's coming in from the bottom. Great storm over there. Brilliant storm. Absolutely shuts it down. At the same time, there's also a push happening here at the front. Queens have so much creep spread right now that they can actually just wander on over here. A little bit of damage being done on the other side of the map too. A prism apparently warped in some zealots. So not as many reinforcements available here for Protoss, but Raynor doesn't need it. Observer is out as well. This is an incredibly well executed playstyle so far by Raynor. Honestly, he's walking all over Solar here in game number one. It's kind of beautiful. In a way, I'm almost a little speechless here, right? Like, I wouldn't be a very good commentator, I guess, if I wasn't talking, but... Like, seriously, if I would have covered up the, the nicknames here, this is a, a very well-played game. Here come the reinforcements. 17 gateways, 13 zealots at once. Raynor absolutely demolishes Solar in game number one. All right. Game number two, we find ourselves on Data C. In a way, though, that game number one, that was... Solar trying to go for a cheap win, right? With a Banelink bust, like, he committed a ton of resources into that Banelink bust. And while, you know, that failing wasn't necessarily the end of the game, it certainly did put him on the back foot, right? So in a way, that was Solar thinking, okay, this guy, this cheeky Italian guy, there's no way he's gonna try and obtain the victory against someone of my caliber with his off race, right? There's no way he's gonna play a straightforward macro game. So I'll try to catch him as he's cutting a corner. So one of the one of the corners that is very easily cut is, for example, well, skipping that sentry, right? Or skipping, for example, a shield battery, or just not having your units in the right place at the right time. Especially when the phoenixes are busy on the other side of the map, it's very easy for Protoss to accidentally miss, you know, one of those engagements. And, yeah, at that point, it would be a very quick 1-0 for Solar, and this series would be entirely different, but... Since it didn't work out, and that defense was honestly as clean as it could have been, Raynor found himself with a nice little advantage, and he never let go. Alright, so game number two, it takes place on Data C. Pretty straightforward macro map, nothing really out of the ordinary on this one, although it can be kind of tricky to secure a fifth base eventually, but... Protoss players honestly haven't had much trouble securing fifth bases recently when they go for that heavy gateway approach. So I'm curious to see what Mr. Raynor decides to go for here. Should be a Nexus into a Cybercore, both at 20 supply. And probably once again a Stargate opener, if I were to make a guess. That seems to be what he does in pretty much all of his Protoss versus Zerks, although... I've seen him play a lot of that, uh, that mass gateway style that Hero is very well known for right now. Um... You know, where he goes for, like, a load of gateways. Like, I guess he went mass... If you hear me say that, that you're not super familiar with StarCraft 2, you may think, okay, didn't he have, like, 17 gateways in the previous game? 
I, I mean like more or less like the opener, where you do still go for a Stargate, and you Chrono Boost out maybe a few Oracles, but then you go for Gateways and Expansions, and Gateways and Expansions, and Double Research and Expansions, right? We've seen Mr. Hero expand incredibly quickly, and that seems to be the playstyle that Raynor likes to go for as well. Now, that is also something that Solar has definitely practiced against a lot. It's very popular on the Korean server. So, yeah. Okay, so there is the Stargate. We'll see how it goes down. For some reason, that Stargate seems a little bit late on my end. Am I crazy? Maybe something was a little bit different right here in the opener from Raynor. Although, maybe I'm just crazy. I don't know. All right. I'm expecting a third hatchery. Yep. From the Zerk. Generally speaking, Zerks will go hatch a gas pool and then a, into a relatively quick third hatch too. I'm expecting a third queen here in the near future. Third queens are... Okay, queens coming up in a... Oh no. Anyways, uh, third queen here, super important. Not just for injecting the bases, but also to make sure that you're safe against those Stargate openers. Zerks have never really complained right about making an extra queen or two. They like making queens. Uh, always a very uh, strong option and... Yeah, for now it means that Zerg can be very low, uh, very low on the gas income. So only a single drone right now is harvesting some gas. This will allow Solar to eventually go into, for example, like a lair. But he doesn't really need to rush it out. He doesn't really need it. He can just defend with static defense, Zerglings with speed, and Queens for the time being. Alright, at what timing will we take the third Nexus? 340 is normal. Well, I mean, normal in 2022 anyways. This was even sooner than that. That was a very, very fast third Nexus, by the way. Alright, it's scouted at this point here by Solar. Solar, though, okay, not giving his opponent any disrespect this time around. It does go into additional droning. It's very tempting at this point to be like, okay, I'm gonna make a round of Zerklings. But the problem is, there's a good chance that there will be two, three, maybe four, five Oracles coming up. At that point, well, they can, <laughs> they can essentially kill like an infinite amount of Zerklings that are trying to work on that third Nexus, so... Not really worth it. Most of the time, if you don't have the links already out at that point in the game, you're better off just making a whole lot of drones on your end and just, yeah, playing the defense game for a little bit longer. What we do see now is a very quick plus one melee approach. So the plus one melee, I think this is a result of that heavy gateway style in particular. Plus one melee is very powerful. It upgrades Baylinks, Zerklings, and obviously Ultras as well to a lesser extent. Because usually they're not really played that commonly, and you don't get that many of them. But there's no denying that the plus one melee helps out a lot against Stalkers and Zealots and all the rest of it. Now this time around... Okay, a little bit over eager there, but this time around, 10 drone kills! Alright, that's actually awful. Like, that is really bad for Solar. If that Oracle would have stayed alive, that would have been... Yeah. That would have been fantastic kill for Raynor, but... You know what? Losing an Oracle for 10 drones is well worth it. Okay, so now we have probably the plus one ground weapons here coming up for Raynor very soon too. He's going into the blink research, fair enough. Stargate is done producing and Solar is, well, overseeing all of this. But that is not ideal at all. Yeah, he's gonna be forced to just try and macro here from, uh... I, I, I don't lose anymore. He's gonna try and, and macro here once more from the back foot, but... That is not really what you want to see. Recall will be used right there on the Oracle to bring it back home to safety. Are we gonna go? I think we're gonna go. Okay. So because those drones were just lost, Solar is forced to remake those. So Raynor's like, wait a second. I know very well how Zerg plays. If you're not making a ton of Zerglings at this stage in the game, it must mean that you're replacing those drones that you lost earlier. That means that I can go for an absurdly quick fourth Nexus. I don't even really need a lot of static defense over here, so I believe that the Nexus was built before that shield battery even came up. This basically is Rainer saying, okay, I know what you're doing, I know how you feel in this scenario, I'm gonna abuse that knowledge against you, and I'm gonna grab myself a very quick fourth. What are you gonna do about it? Turns out, nothing. Nah, I don't think there's really a whole lot that Zerk can do about it. I mean, plus one melee is done. You do need to be cautious here as Protals, because these are Stalkers are going up against Lings. Recall is already used, so yeah, it's still going to be on cooldown for quite a while. Zerklings at this point, though, are moving across the map, and since the Protoss army is on the other side, maybe he can actually force the Council over here. Yeah. I think if the Protoss army was in the right place at the right time, he would be okay. Rather than... Okay. Hold up, maybe this is once again a bit of a mind game right here for Raynor. He cancels the Nexus, but he's going in now for a move on the opponent's fourth. Um... I mean, that will still be a net positive if he, can, if he can get the kill, I guess, but he can't really lose these Stalkers. He doesn't have recoil available, though. 
So I don't really know exactly, exactly if I like this too much. Zerklings in the meantime are coming all the way back home. He probably is trying to recall these units, but he must have realized that that recall on the one Oracle from earlier may have cost him. Okay, I didn't really like that sequence too much. No, I think just defending the fourth base at the bottom here would have been a much better approach. Unless recall was available, but it turns out recall, even though it does feel like that to a Zerk sometimes, it does have a pretty long cooldown. You can't just use it all of the time. I know, crazy. Zerk players right now scratching their heads hearing me say it is. I'm like, what, Loco? You can't recall whenever you like? No, 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 no. Once again, Council right there on the fourth Nexus, and this is now going from bad to worse here from Rainer. Or for Rainer, rather. Bailings at the same time. No Bane speed for them just yet, so instead they're gonna go through the slow pylons. Yeah, someone who's playing at this speed, though, is really not gonna take a lot of damage from it. 379 APM is more than enough to see those incoming, uh, incoming banelings. And in a way, I wonder if Zerk players... Okay, this is just a theory of mine, right? But Zerk... Okay, hear me out. Zerk, in general, is the more defensive race, right? So against Protals and... Well, also against Zerk, I suppose, but especially against Terran, they're looking at the minimap more so than Protals and Terran players normally do, right? Because you need to see if a Medivac comes in, you need to see if there's a Prism in your main base, you need to see if there's units entering your creep on the minimap, right? Therefore, I think that Zerk players have probably trained themselves over the course of like a decade to just stare at the minimap, maybe subconsciously for the most part, but look at the minimap or at the very least glance at it continuously throughout a game. Much more so than the more aggressive races, like for example, Terran or Proto, right? Do you think because of that, Zerg players will naturally take less losses from Baneling roll buys, like the one that Solar just tried going for? Because I'm pretty sure that that's never really gonna work against someone like Raynor. I mean, obviously it's a speed thing, right? But he will constantly be staring at the minimap. Maybe I'm mistaken, but... I wouldn't be surprised if Zerk players that switch to Protals are very, very good at not taking damage from Bailing World Bice. the very least, you know, at this level of play. At this point... Oh, that's a lot of shield batteries, yeah. Raynor is expecting a big push right here from the Zerk. Hatchery coming up. This is going to be the fifth base already here for the Zerg. No, sixth base even here for the Zerg. So that's a very quick base. And he's got another one down south. He's happily mining. This is where you get into a bit of a weird spot as well, though. Because Solar's at 86 drones. He's like, haha, getting a lot of income. Raynor is at 91. He actually needs to stop making probes because he doesn't have enough mineral fields to mine from. Uh, he needs to get another Nexus going here if he wants to make use efficiently, at least, of all of those workers. Here, once again, go to Banelings. Maybe I'll be proven wrong with my hypothesis here in a second. But no, those Banelings did not make their way towards the Mineral Line. Nexus is coming up right now. I would love to see a Greater Spire transition here from Solar. I don't think he has a Spire just yet, but I think a Greater Spire transition may very well be the way to go against this sort of army. Since he's being so aggressive, Protals here is now forced into... Yeah, making an anti-ground army, so sometimes you can catch yourself off guard by that. Or you can catch them off guard, I guess, by going into uh, into that Brute Lord play, right? I think that would be very strong. Alright, good defense here so far by Raynor. But he's gonna have to make a move here at some point. And I wouldn't be surprised if that some point is gonna arrive here as soon as these additional six gateways finish up. He's once again going specifically up to 17 gates. Don't know if that's coincidence or what, but... There's gonna be a lot, a lot of Zerg, man. But I guess soon there will also be the potential for a ton of Zealot Warpins all at once. Here's the Oracle count. Oracle count looking pretty healthy. Target firing down Ravagers apparently primarily. Fair enough. They don't have a lot of energy remaining, though. Bailings in the meantime in the top left and corner do get pushed back, but if you look at the minimap, it is all Solar right now. Solar decides to go Ultras. All right. I kind of like it. He's already been upgrading the melee, right? Plus one Carapace is done too, so Ultras are definitely going to be quite a strong option. And if you can sort of like soft contain the Protals here on four bases, things are going to be pretty good. Once again, you see that timing right there on the pool? No way, man. I don't think you're going to be able to blow up a lot of a lot of probes. Maybe I'm mistaken, but that Sim City right there was also kind of pretty, right? Anyways. Emphasis on was, because it's all blown up at this point. Uh, this Archon is in a strange position, but it's also in an incredibly well-protected position. 
to the point where Zerklings and Banelings are never really going to be able to trade very efficiently against it. Is that one locked up? I think it might actually be locked in there. All right, I wasn't sure about that, but it looks to me like it may very well be stuck. That trade over there was pretty good as well for Protoss. Finally now pushing back some of the Zerk army. Solar doesn't have a lot of gas. He never actually secured the gases here on some of his outer bases. Meaning that he can't actually make that many Ultras. He just invested into 3-3. Or, well, not 3-3, I guess 3-2. And then also Chitinous Plating and all that. Adrenal Glands. All of that is a very gas-heavy transition. So he's going to be forced into quite a few links for the time being. But, yeah, he's in a good spot here. Protoss trying to grab another Nexus. So far, it's not really happening. I think he killed a Pylon right there to free that Archon. Ah, this Archon is responsible for 13 kills, though. Not bad whatsoever. Do we have an Observer out? No, we just have five Oracles. I would like to see some of the Revelations being used right there on Creep. Here we go again. Bailing roll by. Not gonna happen, buddy. Not gonna happen, buddy. Nope. Double expansion here from Rainer. Okay. So he's expanding down south while also simultaneously expanding up north. A little bit risky, but he does need to get himself some new eco going. Ultras at this point are spotted as well, so we'll see what the Protoss here decides to do against it. At the same time, there is a Zerg push as well at the third Nexus. All of the Zealots, though, decided to go in for a counterattack. This is, once again, those, like, Zealot Lisks, right, that Mr. Raynor likes to go for. He's sending the majority of his army towards the other side of the map, which I don't know if that is the correct choice. He's even pushed with the main part of his force. This third Nexus is going to be in a lot of trouble, but some units did turn around and they're trying to clean up whatever they can. Reinforcing Zealots are also trying their very best. Zealots in the meantime inside of the main base of the Zerk and what seemed like a questionable trade initially, as long as this Nexus lives, I think that was pretty good for Raynor. Yep. I do think that that was pretty good for Raynor. There are some burrowed Zerklings here still available. No Banelings though. If those were Banelings, that would have been pretty nice too. Zealots in the meantime, by the way, still going to town. Going to be able to kill another Queen. All right. Okay, that was silly. <laughs> that was silly. He doesn't have a lot of vision around those Barrowed Zerklings, so maybe it's not the end of the world, but... Now suddenly, Protoss has two additional bases, 94, 94 probes... ...versus 64 workers on the side of Solar. That exchange just now is not something that we see Protoss players normally make. Splitting up the army, sending half of it for the counterattack. That decision right there was a proper high-level decision, and it worked out. Ultras here trying their very best against those Archons. Well, Ultras do definitely win against Archons in a one-on-one -on -one battle, but there's quite a little bit of Protoss here on the back of it. Right now, though, the mining here for Protoss is going to be very nice. If we look at the income here at this stage in the game, nearly 4,000 minerals a minute versus the 3,000 a minute for Solar. Every minute that goes by, Raynor gets further and further ahead. He's now going into Immortals. Getting some additional shield upgrades too. Ultras harassing the bases down south. A couple of Oracles from the early game actually doing surprisingly well. Yeah, Oracles do uh, spell damage. So whenever they attack with the Pulsar Cannon, it's spell damage only. Meaning that they ignore armor. Spells in StarCraft 2 ignore all armor. And that's basically what Ultras, you know, are. They, they, yeah, they are very tanky because they are. Once again, no, Zealot's going to town over here. Tons of, worker uh, tons of workers getting destroyed. Zerklings trying their best to once more go for a counterattack over here. But the Protoss army seems to be split up. Nexus over here is quite vulnerable, but... This is not something that Solar has really pushed anymore of the last few minutes. Still though, Raynor is up with his back against the wall as far as the creep spread goes, right? Like he doesn't want to wander too far out there. If you look right now at his vision, this is such a wide open base, but I guess he's taking chances right now, right? He's realizing, okay, if my opponent is going to attack, it's probably going to happen in one of the outer expansions instead, just because there's a lot of mineral fields there. So he's leaving the natural, the third base, the fourth base, a wide open. And so far, all right, so far, it seems to be working. That was a good hit right there for Solar, killing a bunch of those probes. Not bad whatsoever. Rainer's maxed. Protoss army doesn't look so big though when you have uh, 90 workers, huh? Yeah, probes are also starting to oversaturate those expansions now, so you might want to look into another base, but that is going to be so far out there. 
The base is in the bottom right and in the top left. I'm not entirely convinced that those are going to be ones you can acquire. So instead he decides to go for what seems to be a double push. Big hit squad over here at the same time. I love this Zorkling run by, but reinforcing Zealots can now come out because he's no longer maxed. Okay. A split push from Protoss. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? All right, Zorklings trying to use their mobility right there. Great splits against the Banelings. Maru, who? What in the world? It's very fresh, right? Like, if you've watched... There it is. If you've watched StarCraft 2 for the last decade, Raynor's playing Protoss in a very Zergy way. Not just because of the worker count and the heavy expending, but also with the way that he attacks. With Protoss though, making those decisions to split up your army, they're significantly more difficult. But normally we see Protoss armies moving in one big ball, but yeah, he seems to be keen to just split it up in two to three different groups. And, and apparently it's good enough to take down someone like Solar in a premier tournament. Hey, if you made it all the way until the end of this video, please do me a favor, hit the like button. I know every single YouTuber on this platform asks for that, but like, it really does help, so. If you could take the one second that it takes, that would be awesome. Thank you very much.